Deck the halls with boughs of holly. Fa la 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 la. Yeah, well, we can't deck the halls with bells of holly without actually decking the halls. So yeah, I think I'm gonna put Christmas out. It's not too soon, is it? Nah, it's not too soon. Hello everyone, welcome back. It is so good to see all of you. I hope this finds you well and happy and that y'all have had a great week. <laughs> I've had a super good week. It's just been a little bit busy. Do y'all find this happening to you? Do you find that this time of year, things just feel and seem a little bit busier? I know they have for me and I'm not even sure why, <laughs> but it just seems to be busy. Maybe it's because we all have holidays on our mind now. I mean, really, the holidays are not too far around the corner. So I think for me, maybe I'm just feeling a little extra busy because I'm gearing up and getting ready for the holidays. <laughs> I almost put a Christmas tree up this week and then I said, no, no, I gotta wait at least one more week. So maybe next week we'll see a little bit more Christmas in this grand room behind me. And speaking of the holidays and speaking of Christmas, y'all, I have got some super fun projects coming your way today. <laughs> We're gonna be working on some Christmas ornaments and I'm super excited to share these ideas and designs with y'all. So, you know, we better just go get to crafting before we run out of time. I love handmade ornaments on the tree. I just think there is something so sweet and so special about them. So for our first project, we are going to create these darling little sleigh bells. And I cut mine out with my laser cutter. But if you don't have a laser cutter, you could use pre-made ones. I've seen them at Hobby Lobby and I think Dollar Tree might even have something very similar. Okay, so to get started, I've got all of the pieces here and we're just going to go ahead and start by getting these painted. So we have the front side and the back side. And I want the um, back side to have some copper on it so that we see that copper through our sound slits. So I'm just going to use this metallic copper paint this is folk art brand to paint the very bottom half of this i don't need to paint the whole thing i really just need to paint a little bit so that it shows through our sound slits so i'm going to go ahead and get all three of these painted really quickly wow i love this metallic paint i just think it is so pretty and i love this copper color too it's one of my favorite colors So for the front side of our bells, I do want these to have a little bit of a stained look. So I am using a paint color here that I just blended myself. I mixed this with some burnt umber, a little bit of black, and then just a tiny tinge of red. I thought this color would be really pretty with the copper. And you could use antiquing wax to do this step, which I normally do, but I did want a little richer color in these. So after I get it painted on pretty thick, pretty heavy, while the paint is still really wet, I'm going to come in with a clean dry cloth and wipe away all of that excess paint so that we achieve that stained look to these. And I'll go ahead and do that to all three of these and we're only, we only need to stain just the front side because we're going to be gluing this front piece to the back, back piece so there's no need to paint both sides. Alrighty, our paint has completely dried so we can now go ahead and get our bell pieces attached to one another. I'll be attaching the top piece to the front side of the back piece. <laughs> That's a little confusing, but I think y'all know where I'm going with this. I'm using some wood glue to attach these and I do spread this fairly thin over the entire surface. I want the whole surface to be fully coated so that we get a nice, good, strong um, bond between the two pieces. So I'll go ahead and attach them, get them all lined up. And then once I've got them lined up and they're 
they're perfectly fit together, I'll go ahead and clamp them. And when I clamped these, I did get a little bit of squeeze out, which was no big deal on the edges, but I panicked a little bit when I got some squeeze out in the sound slits. So I grabbed a paintbrush really quick. I had a little tiny paintbrush sitting next to me and I grabbed it, got it a little bit wet. And while that glue is still wet, this trick worked perfectly to clean up all of that excess glue. So panic moment over. <laughs> I let these set up for about two hours before unclamping them. And oh, they're just looking so good. I love seeing that copper peek through. It is so pretty. After we get them unclamped, I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of antiquing to these. And I'm gonna use paint to do this. Oh, and I also stained the ridge bars for our bells as well. They're stained that same exact color as the bells. So. I to antique these, I thought it would be fun to just try to do this with some dry brushing so that I didn't have to do a whole bunch of sanding because I really don't enjoy sanding. Plus, sometimes when you do the sanding, it takes it sands off some of the antique color as well, that stained color, our first initial stained color, and I didn't really want that to happen. So I just came in with a very dry brush. This is a really dry brush, and I'm trying to do this with a light hand and just sort of haphazardly painted this on, not trying to get full coverage because I do want some of that stain to show through so that it gives it just a little tinge of that aged look. However, on this one, I did get a little heavy handed, so I ended up having to do a little bit of sanding anyway. loving how these are looking so far. So now we'll go ahead and get our ridge bar glued on and y'all don't do what I did and get glue happy because we only need to have glue on the middle section of this ridge bar because that's the only part that actually connects to the bell because we have a little bit of hangover on this. So I got glue happy and had to wipe a little bit of it away, which did make that a little tacky on the back, but that's okay. These are just for me and I did get some squeeze out so again, we're going to clean that up and then we get to move on to my favorite part, embellishing. I don't want to go too overboard with the embellishments here, but I do feel like these sweet little bells just need a little extra something something. So I'm just going to play around with some greenery and I start by adding in a couple sprigs of pine boughs here and then I'll come in with this just really soft delicate lamb's ear add a little pine cone and then to finish the embellishing off on this guy this is the medium size one I thought it would be fun to add a, some mulberries so I just had a pick with mulberries and I just cut a few off and add some berries to the top of this and then I think I'm going to leave it at that for this little the the medium one here and I want to do a little something different to each one of them to give them their own individual look. So we'll just keep playing and having fun with this whole process. <laughs> Right about now is when I realized, oh shoot, I forgot to drill holes in the tops of these for our hangers. So I ran out to the shop, drilled some holes in these really quickly, and then finished this one off. And oh, I think it just looks so sweet. I love the understated, simplistic look of this. I find the entire process of embellishing to be so relaxing and so peaceful. I love how with this step you can just take so many creative liberties and just play and enjoy the entire process. One of the things that I do try to keep in mind when I'm embellishing is to choose pieces that add lots of personality and visual interest to our finished look. I do this by layering and mixing greenery that does 
in the end, create an intentional curated moment. To finish off these darling little bells, we'll go ahead and just add a ribbon hanger to them. And I am using some velvet ribbon that I found at Hobby Lobby. This came in a big roll of just a variety of colors. And I love this one because it's really nice and thin, so it's the perfect size for hangers, so for our ornament hangers. I also love that it just, this velvet just adds a lot of sweet, simplistic elegance to the piece. Y'all, these just turned out so good. I love them. I love that each one of them has their own individual personality, but yet they all pair so well together. They match each other and they just make a cute little trio. I can hardly wait to hang these on, on my tree. We have a tree that we do in the family room that's got all, all of our fun, handmade, traditional pieces on it. This is going to be so fun to add to the tree. I am particularly excited about this project. I think we are going to have so much fun with this one. So we are going to take this big giant bowl of ornaments and transform them. I found these ones at Walmart. They just came in a great big tub for like $6. So I thought that was an amazing amazing deal actually. So to get started on these, we are going to start painting them and I am trying to make these look like granite. I kind of want to just give these that very earthy, natural look of stone. Actually, maybe not granite, but stone. I kind of want them to have that earthy stone look. So the paint that I am using here is a blend. I mixed a couple of different colors here to get this really earthy, creamy brown color. It's a very tan, I guess you could say. And then I mixed in a whole bunch of baking soda into this paint to give our paint a lot of texture because that's what's going to give us that stone look. So I go ahead and just layer on the paint really thick. And I'm not super tidy about this. I kind of am messy. And I kind of like these projects where you can get away with being messy. So I'll go ahead and do several of these in this tan color and then we'll move on to a green that I think y'all are going to love because y'all know me I have to put some green in here somewhere I love green it's my favorite color and I almost always add green to any season's decor so for this green, I started out with some folk art moss green, and then I added in a little bit of black because I wanted this to be a very deep, dark green with a very earthy tree look. So it just, it's kind of very reminiscent of a pine tree, like a deep, dark pine tree. And I love this color. I also mixed baking soda into this one to give us that nice thick texture. And again, I just splatter it all over the orb, being messy and just having fun with the whole process. I did add two very thick coats of paint to each one of these and then let it dry completely. You want to make sure that it is thoroughly dry before moving on to this next step. So for this step, I wanted to come in and enhance all of that texture by dry brushing just a little bit darker color onto these. And then I will go over that with a little bit of white as well because the darker color topped with a little bit of white gives you those low lights and highlights and my goal here is to really just bring out a lot of that texture and draw your attention to the texture of each of these pieces so I do it to every single one of them and then I let that completely dry as well
So you can see how dry brushing these darker layers of color really does enhance that texture. I love how these are turning out so far. These might end up being my favorite project of the day. After letting our dry brushed layer thoroughly dry, we're now going to come in and add some splatters. So to create really good splatters, you want to have a very thin down paint color. So I just added a lot of water to this and I am using some white here, but I also added in a little tiny bit of tan to this because I really wanted a nice warm white color. And then I'll just dip my fan brush into our really thinned down paint and tap it with another brush to just start getting some layers of splatters on this and I think the splatters are what just really take this over the top and just gives it that really cool natural stone look that I was trying to achieve. For the green ones I did put the splatters on a little bit heavy but then on the tan colored ones I went a little lighter. Then to finish these off we'll go ahead and add the tops back to these and the tops on these were silver so I actually painted every single one of them with some uh, antique gold rub and buff. So once we get all of the tops put back on, that's going to finish this project off and I'll go ahead and style them in a bowl and y'all, I think you are going to love the end results on these. For our last set of ornaments today, we are going to be playing with some yarn. I love using yarn this time of year. I feel like it just adds so much warmth to a space, especially during the holidays and the winter months. So we're going to attempt to wrap this entire ornament with yarn. So I start by adding a line of glue and then just start wrapping. I just create a little coil at the very top. And y'all, I apologize that I keep going off frame with this. <laughs> Sometimes I just get so absorbed in what I'm doing that I forget where my hands are. So again, I apologize that I keep moving off frame, but I do think you can somewhat see what I'm doing and you kind of get the idea. So we'll just go ahead and continue wrapping this this ornament from the top down. I did start from the top down and I just keep going around and around and around and around. As I come to the bottom of the ornament, I do try to wrap this really tight, just in a really tight coil to prevent it from unraveling or, you know, coming undone. Plus, I just feel like that gives it a nice, clean, 
polished finish to the ornament. And do use protection, finger protection, if you're using hot glue to do this, because y'all, I don't want you to get burned. So I am, I did put a pretty liberal dollop of glue, hot glue on there to get my tight little coil at the end. After I felt pretty good about how this was looking, I did snip off my yarn and then added a teeny tiny bit more glue in there and then tried to push that little tail end down inside that coil as you know far as I could to just sort of make it disappear so that you don't really see that little tail end. And I think this turned out okay. I don't know if First of all, I wasn't, after I got it finished, I wasn't too sure that I really liked this color of yarn. It was just a little too bulky and it sort of looks a little messy in my opinion. It just looks a little messy. So for the second one, I've got, I'm going to use a different yarn that's 100% cotton. This is a 100% cotton yarn, so it's a lot softer and it's also a little thinner. Plus, I think I took take my time a little more with this one to get my layers really nice and tight. One of the things that I did learn with the first one is you don't want to stretch the yarn as you're winding it around and making your coils around and around. Don't stretch the yarn real tight just sort of let them loosely lay against each other and then I took my little uh, silicone glue protector thingy I'm not sure what this is called and pushed the layers real close together this made it look a lot tidier plus it sort of hid that hot glue because we all know when you're working with hot glue it does show it doesn't dry clear and you can see it and like I said with the first one I felt like I was a little messy and you see a lot of the hot glue so I tried to be a lot more tidy with this one and I tried to get my rows a lot closer together I am liking the way this one is turning out a lot better than our first one. So I think the main lesson that I learned here is to just take my time <laughs> and really be precise about the layering as I am wrapping the orb and just making sure that I get all of the layers really close together. And another thing that I did differently with this one is I tried to keep my glue line a lot thinner. I was, a um, instead of having it just glob up on there, I tried to keep it thinner, which it's really kind of hard to control my glue with this big giant glue gun. <laughs> I think I probably should invest in one of those, um, those uh, like fine tip glue guns for, especially for a project like this. So if you have one that's got a fine tip on it, I recommend using that one. So now we're at the end of this one. And again, I just try to really get that end piece really tightly coiled at the bottom and then just tuck in that little tail to try to hide it and try and hide it the best I can. I can honestly say this one definitely turned out so much better than the first one. The first one is just very bulky. So the second one, because I used that thinner yarn, it just looks so much tidier. And I did definitely take my time with this one, where with the first one, it just, I kind of rushed through it and it, as a result, looked very messy. So I think it is worth it to take your time with this process because it definitely looks a lot better. All right, so let's go ahead and finish these off by adding a ribbon through the tops. So I'm using that same velvet ribbon that we used on our cute little bells. And I just glue the two ends together so that I can create a loop and then I'll string it through the ornament cap. And this step was a little fiddly. I had a little bit of a hard time getting that to string through there because the velvet ribbon is a little thick and that cap, the cap has got a really tiny hole in it. <laughs> But with a little perseverance, I finally got it to loop through there. So I'll just loop it around, tie it tight, and 
voila, we've got a really cute yarn ornament. I do like how these turned out and I think I'm definitely going to make some more. Okay, so now more than ever, I am really wanting to get some Christmas out. <laughs> I can't believe I'm even thinking about it because this is literally the earliest I have ever even considered pulling Christmas out. Normally I wait until after Thanksgiving, but working on these projects today just made me in the mood. It made me feel very Christmassy and I might be feeling ready to take fall down and start putting Christmas up, but I don't know. Is it too soon? When do y'all start decorating for Christmas? I think I have to put a little bit of Christmas up so that I have a way to display all of the cool things that we've been working on. Last week we made some really cool candle risers and this week we worked on ornaments and I love them. I think my favorite of the three is the bowl of ornaments, the little bowl of orbs that we made. I think they are so beautiful and the color palette is just mwah. <laughs> really love that color palette. And I think my second favorite are our cute little bells. They just turned out so darling and they're gonna look so cute on my family room Christmas tree. That's the tree that we put all of our traditional ornaments on, all of our you know ornaments that I've had forever ornaments that my children made, ornaments that have been passed down, you know, this the fun traditional tree. So they're going to look darling on that tree. And our fun little yarn ornaments, mm, I, I like them, but I think they need a little bit more work. I think I need to maybe not use hot glue. Anyway, they all turned out really good, and I would love to know if y'all had a favorite from today's projects. Alrighty friends, that is going to wrap up today's projects, but y'all, you have to come back and see me again next week because I've got some really cool projects that we are going to work on. In fact, I have several weeks worth of projects and so many ideas to share with y'all. So y'all come back, see me again next week. Until then, y'all take care and I will see you soon. Bye. Oh, by the way, in case you are wondering what I have coming up, <laughs> I'll give you guys just a teeny tiny little sneak peek. I have themed all of our projects for the next several weeks and next week is going to be all about trees. So I guess that's not really a sneak peek, but it's a big hint. See you next week. Okay, so I just have to say, I really, really, I really think, really, really, how many times are we gonna say really, really? Fall, y'all, I can't believe I just said that. To bring y'all your, to bring y'all your, y'all your, <laughs> fa la 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 la.